Hi, I'd like to talk about Parse, and in the next series of videos, I'd like to uh, talk about how you can create your own social media app or website using Parse. So, uh, so what is Parse exactly? Well, Parse is a is a service that provides all of the back end for your website, and this is their, you know, or the, all the back end for your social media, you know, whatever it is you're making, it could be an app. Um, could be a website and uh, you know parse says you know build your perfect app for on any platform right so parse works with iOS Android you know um, the internet of things like they, they abbreviated IOT um, and the thing is parse is 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 called a backend as a service so in other words they provide the backend and you don't have to create you know databases and write backend code to manage the database you know, their service provides all that. And this is really great for designers and people that are making front-end, you know, um, stuff. You know, if you're making, like, the, the, the front-end for a website, you know, you don't have to make the back-end. Parse has done all that for you. Um, the service is free up until a certain amount of usage, so I think they allow up to uh, 30 requests per second. So if you're just beginning, you know, you're obviously not going to get that kind of traffic. So you know, it's pretty much free for, for testing and playing around. To work with Parse, you'll need to make an account. So I'm already logged in here, but if you're not logged in, it'll give you a button here that says, you know, create an account. And once you've created an account and logged in, then you'll be able to click here and it'll say, you know, make an app or something like that. And you can click the button here and it'll take you to your apps or it'll show no apps. These are all my apps here. And uh, you'll see this link here that says create a new app. So if you want to create a new app, you can click the button. And I'll create an app. I'll call it um, test number four. <laughs> I have a lot of these, right? So I'll click create. And, uh, and then here's your app. Okay. And let, let's talk about what is actually going on with Parse. Okay, so Parse is going to act as your database to hold, you know, the data and the information that travels through your social media app website thing. Okay, and if uh, if I if I'm here and I'm looking at the app, um, it gives me some options here. You know, that little thing kind of appears and disappears, but uh, you know, it says core analytics push and quick start and then there's this button here that shows you settings clone export keys and collaborate okay so uh, i'm going to click on core here and this is going to take me to you know a browser that lets me browse the data in my app okay and parse looks at all of the data in in a, in a couple ways right so essentially you know this is your database is your app and then the data is here and the data is worked out as classes and then every class contains rows and then every row is made up of columns okay so you can think of a class pretty much as a spreadsheet containing rows and columns of data okay Let's let's make a simple app here just for fun, right? So imagine like my app, I want to create a social media app that's like a blog, and I want people to be able to post comments to the blog. So I'll I'll or let's imagine I want to post, you know, make create posts for my for my blog. So I'm gonna click on the add class button here, and I'll create a new custom class and I'll give it a name. I'll call it post. Uh, just as a good practice, we'll make all of the class names uppercase, and then we'll do, you know, we'll have to assign the columns names, and we'll make those all lowercase. So I'll click Create Class, and now I've got a new class called Post, and right now it has zero rows in it, okay, or zero records. And here it is. So these are the columns, and the columns are, um, you know, these are the default ones, and they're named object ID, created at, updated at, ACL, okay? And so every row that I create will contain information for each of these columns. So essentially each, each row is an object that has properties that are the values in each column, okay? And so 
So, you know, you can also call call the rows objects and think of them as JavaScript objects. And the way that Parse works is we're going to access all this data through JavaScript. And so when we get these rows out of here in our front end code, they're going to be JavaScript objects that we work with. And these are going to be the properties they have. Okay. So, uh, so how does this work? Well, imagine I wanted to create a post on my website. Now, of course, we could do this all through an actual website, and we'll do that later. But for just right now, just imagine my website created a new object and saved it to the database. Then that would be like we were creating a, a new row here in Parse. And, uh, and you could say, you know, um, you know, fill this in and give it some properties, and then it would appear there, right? Um, you know, my, my rows right now are not very interesting. They just have, uh, you know, object ID and created at, right? There's no, no content here. Why don't we click on this plus column button and then we'll add a new column. So a column is a type of information that we can save to a row. And you can give a column a name. So maybe I'll, I'll give this the name title. And then you can also give a column a type. So a column can store any of this type of information. So it can store a string, a number, a Boolean, date, file, geopoint, array, object, pointer, and relation. Okay? So string, number, Boolean is, you know, just your raw JavaScript objects. Like a string can be any number of characters or text. A number is, you know, exactly that. It's a number. Um, could be the price of a product. It could be, you know, the count of posts. You know, um, a Boolean is a value that can be true or false. A date is a date. Every post will automatically get a created and updated at date. So you can add a, an extra date in there if you want for some other purpose. But essentially, the post will already be dated, so you don't always even need this. A file can be a file. So you can upload a file to Parse. Parse handles the file uploads, and it stores them, and you don't have to worry about it. And it can be any kind of file. It can be an image, it could be text, it could be a video, it could be audio, you know. A geopoint is, um, you know, like a, a location, right? So it, you can use it with uh, GPS or with mapping, okay? Um, an array is a list of objects, just like in JavaScript. Um, you know, arrays in JavaScript hold a list of objects, so you can actually store a list of objects in one of your columns. You know, so, you know, a, um, you know, you might create a record that's a user profile and then a user might have a list of, of friends or a list of favorite things or whatever, and they could store that in an array. An object is a JavaScript object, so it can be a custom, you know, element that has multiple properties and features. Um, a point and relation, these are special and these essentially point to other tables or other you know, classes in parse. So you can have multiple classes here. I've just got the one in this case, but <clears throat> if the in the future when I add more classes, then I can create a pointer from one class to another, and that allows my tables to have a relation to each other, right? We'll get more into that later. So for right now, you know, for the title of, of my post, uh, I'm just going to use a string, and then I'll create, uh, I'll click create column. And now you can see um, there's the title column there. And here's my, my new record I created. Let's, let's fill it in. So maybe I'll, I'll put a title in here. I'm writing a post for my blog, and I want to say, you know, hello. And then, uh, you know, there it is, right? Uh, well, it's still not very interesting. Maybe my, blo my, my blog also needs to show more than the title. It needs to show maybe some content, right? So I'll click here to add a new column. I'll set the type to string. And maybe I'll call this content. Um, the columns will appear on the right side sometimes, so and you can drag them around or rearrange them. So maybe I'm going to drag this one over like that. And this content column, I can type something in here. We'll say, you know, hello, this is my uh, first post, right? Okay. And, uh, and there you go. So now I've got one record. You know, and if I want to create another record, I can click the plus row button. And then, uh, you know, we can give it a, a title here. I'll say another post. And then I'll give it some content. I'll say having fun posting to my blog. Now, normally we won't be inputting 
stuff in, you know, in the back end of Parse. That'll happen from our website. So, you know, people could be using our app and creating posts, and they would be generating these posts from the app or from the website, okay? And they would be reading them from the website, too. So they might go to my site, and they'd see these two posts, and they might have an opportunity to reply and then create another post of their own, okay? So anyway, so here's our post. Here's a few notes on these things. The object ID field is special. And every record in the table or every object in a class, you could rephrase it that way, right? Every object in a class has a, an object ID, okay? This is sort of a requirement to make the database work correctly, okay? The object ID is a unique identifier for every record. So every record needs to have a unique value here, okay? Parse um, comes up with these values. I don't know how, it, you know, it's a programmer thing, um, you know, it just looks like a bunch of random characters, but parse makes sure that they're they're unique, right? So every one of these is unique. And that, that provides a couple features here that, that you'll, you'll need to understand. Since these values are unique, you can always access a, a particular post from its ID. Okay, so you can always find one post by the ID, and that post will have will be unique, you know, uniquely identified by that ID. No two posts will have the same ID. Okay, um, you can use this as a pointer too. So remember when we saw the the, the pointer um, value for the column, right? This is what the value would be. It would be a pointer to an ID for a post or an object in another class. Okay. Um, so uh, so one of the things is you should let parse make the object ID. You never create the object ID. Okay. So parse is always going to generate that. Parse is also going to generate the created at and updated at dates for you. So you don't need to do those. So you can see here, I, I did this on April 24th, 2015, right? Okay, and when I add another post, it'll put the date in for me. Okay, so there's a quick, uh, a quick overview of getting started with parse, right? So hopefully that's pretty easy. You can play around in here and add some new records, make a new class if you like. Okay. In general, I would say um, let's always make the class names uppercase. Don't use any spaces or special characters in the name. Try and keep it one word. For the column names, let's always do them lowercase and then no spaces or special characters in these names either. Okay. And then I'll continue in another video. I'll just keep these short. Okay. And then we'll, we'll just go through step by step.